Welcome to eBible Fellowship's Sunday Bible Study. For broadcast times in your area of these studies, visit our website at www.ebiblefellowship.com. And now it's time to begin our Sunday study with your speaker, Chris McCann. Hello and welcome to eBible Fellowship Sunday Afternoon Bible Study. Today is study number 5 of Daniel chapter 2. And we're going to begin reading in Daniel 2, verse 22. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and has made known unto me now what we desired of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Therefore Daniel went in unto Arioch, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus unto him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon, bring me in before the king, and I will show unto the king the interpretation. Then Arioch brought in Daniel before the king in haste, and said thus unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah that will make known unto the king the interpretation. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, Art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king hath demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers, show unto the king. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets, and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. And we'll stop reading there. Now, back in verse 22, again it says, He revealeth the deep and secret things, he knoweth what is in the darkness, and light dwelleth with him. And here Daniel is referring to God, because God has made known to Daniel and his friends the king's dream and the interpretation of the dream. These are the things that they were praying to God, beseeching God, and asking of God to reveal to him, and and he did. The Lord answered their prayer, and God um, opened up their understanding so that they knew what the king's dream was. And not only did they learn the dream, but they were given the interpretation of the dream. And here, this is spoken of as um, the Lord revealing deep and secret things. The word deep is um, 5994 in, in the concordance, and it's only used in this verse in Daniel 2, verse 22. But there are related words, one is 6009, 6, that uh, is found in Psalm 92, Verse 5, Psalm 92, verse 5, O Jehovah, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. God's thoughts are very deep. And, of course, the Bible is a record of God's thoughts. It is um, the word of God, and, and words are spoken because people first have thoughts, and then they speak their thoughts. Um, also, there's another Hebrew word, 6012, that's found in Ezekiel chapter 3. Ezekiel 3, it, it's a word translated as deep at times, but it's translated in Ezekiel 3 um, in, in a, a different way. Of Ezekiel chapter 3 it says um, in verse 4 and he said unto me son of man go get thee unto the house of Israel 
and speak with my words unto them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. The word strange is, is this word that's related to deep. And it's also uh, used again in the next verse, verse 6. Uh, not to many people of a strange speech, that is, of a deep speech and of a hard language whose words thou canst not understand. Surely had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. So here God is um, telling Ezekiel that he is sent to Israel. And, and Israel is a familiar uh, language. The, the Hebrew is a familiar language. And God has not sent him to, say, Babylon and the, and the Babylonians who have um, a strange speech and a hard language. The, the, remember, God um, also refers to Babylon in the Bible as a people whose um, language they did not understand. And... And so he hasn't sent the prophet Ezekiel to them when when God speaks of those of a deep speech or strange speech and a hard language. He he uh, explains to us in verse six that that means whose words thou canst not understand. And that's where it fits in with the Bible. The Bible is a hard language. It, it is not an earthly language. Yes, we're reading the King James translation, and it's in our English language, and others may read um, the, the Reina Valera translation in the Spanish language, or, or other earthly translations in their particular earthly language. But all that has done, all the, the King James translation has done, is made the words understandable to us. But, but as far as the speech, the language, it, the Bible is still a heavenly book. It, it is a heavenly language, a spiritual word. That, and it's a, a language that's of a deep speech, a strange speech to our ears. It's a hard language, and, and, and it's words we cannot understand because we're, we're of the earth. We, a man starts out with a natural mind. Uh, he, he has no ability to know the deep speech of God. And, and remember, as the psalm said, God's thoughts are very deep. They're, they're very strange to us. We, we cannot interpret them and unless God reveals what he, he has said, unless he in, provides the interpretation for us as he did for Daniel Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. God is the one who uh, revealed the dream and interpreted the dream first for Daniel. And then God showed Daniel. He, he opened up Daniel's understanding to it so that he could understand, as it were, this strange speech, this other language of the kingdom of heaven. Well, um, the, the word secret, back in Daniel, chapter, chapter 2, verse 22. Let me turn back there. Daniel 2, 22. He revealeth the deep and secret things. Now, secret is 5642. It's Aramaic and therefore would correspond to 5641. Um, which, which is a word translated secret uh, also and, and various other ways. For instance, 5641, 
that the Aramaic word here in Daniel 2.22 corresponds to is the word in Deuteronomy 29. Deuteronomy chapter 29 in verse 29. The secret things belong unto Jehovah our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. The secret things belong to God. And, and God knows them, of course. And it, it's uh, all according to his purpose, his will, and what he intends to do, whether or not he reveals them to us. But once God does reveal something to his people, they belong to us. They are ours. They they now have been interpreted and and the heavenly thoughts the heavenly words of the kingdom of god have been interpreted so that we on the earth can understand them and now they are ours god has given them to us we um, are now actually responsible as stewards of the mysteries of God to be faithful concerning the thing that he has revealed to us. It's not a light matter. It's not a little thing. When God reveals information, when he opens up a, a truth, a, a particular truth of any kind to the ears of his people and and he grants understanding and and now it, it has entered into the realm of their possession they now know this this thing that has been hidden and kept secret perhaps since the foundation of the world and, and now God has entrusted this truth to them and, of course, we can look at the doctrine such as the end of the church age as an example. And once God entrusts a truth like that to his people, now they have a responsibility and an obligation to maintain the truth, to use it as a talent or as a pound, to, um, to share it, and, and, and to utilize it uh, as a good steward of the mystery that God has opened up to them. And when they fail to do that, or when um, a person who claims to be a child of God once would say that he or she understood a particular truth and, and has taken possession of it, and yet now at a later point, begins to turn back, begins to want to stuff it back in the Bible is really uh, almost what the picture is. They, they don't want it anymore. They don't like it. it, it, it it's uh, a truth that perhaps they've suffered for that's caused affliction, as affliction does arise for the word's sake, a truth that is difficult to maintain, uh, a truth that is just um, better off uh, not known. They, they, they don't, of course, say it that way. They come to a new and, and uh, more enlightened understanding. We were wrong. Of course, it's not the case with the doctrine of the end of the church age. There's literally hundreds of Bible verses that teach it. Yet, now, it's like they want to just stuff it back into the ground, a buried treasure. Can you imagine? You just found gold, silver, precious stones, and it's a glorious thing. It's really true riches. And, and now, man in his blindness and his ignorance and his foolishness takes what is truly valuable and he wants to stuff it back into the ground 
where it was dug out from and hide it back up. He doesn't want anything to do with it. Of course, people would never do that with earthly treasure, but they do it all the time with spiritual treasures because they, they really don't have eyes to see what, what's in their hands. They don't, they don't understand the value and, and the, the glory. Uh, remember, as God says in Proverbs 25, in verse 2, it is the glory of God to conceal a thing. The word conceal is this uh, word, uh, 5641, whose Aramaic version is translated secret. It's the glory of God to secret a thing, to make something secret and hidden. And, and so you cannot see it easily at all. It, it's not on the surface. It's buried beneath. And it goes on to say, but the honor of kings is the search out a matter. And we've looked at this verse before. The word, the Hebrew word translated as thing and the Hebrew word translated as matter is dabar, the, the, the word for word. The word uh, dabar identifies with the word of God, the Bible. It is the glory of God to secret a word but the honor of kings is the search out a word. And this is exactly what God has done in all scripture. He has secreted a word. But uh, the, the wonderful truth we're reading in Daniel 2.22 is that he, God revealeth the deep and secret things. The things that God himself has hidden, God himself makes known and reveals, not to everyone, but to his people. And um, the same word, which corresponds to the Aramaic secret, is found in Psalm 119 and verse 19, which says, I am a stranger in the earth. Hide not thy commandments from me. Hide is the word. Uh, conceal not thy commandments from me. Secret not thy commandments from me. And the whole Bible is a law book. The whole Bible is the commandments or contains the commandments of God. And isn't it um, sort of unusual that God hides his commandments. You would think that God would want everyone to know his commandments. But the truth is he does hide his commandments from man. For instance, the Sunday Sabbath. You, you don't see it. Um, it's not apparent in Matthew 28 verse 1 in the King James and many translations. God has allowed the translators to translate words um, not very well in that verse. And it serves to hide the commandment that Sunday is the New Testament Sabbath day. In Matthew 28 and verse 1, it says, In, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first of the Sabbaths, or the beginning of the New Testament Sabbath. The Old Testament Sabbath uh, came to a close. That's early Sunday morning, and, and the first of the New Testament Sabbaths began. God hid that information. Why would he do that? We, we would think that, that God uh, would want mankind to know that commandment, as a matter of fact, the Lord could have read it, written it very clearly and written it, uh, posted it in many places. He could have said it in each of the Gospels, in, in Acts, and, and in every New Testament epistle. He could have said, Sunday is the Sabbath. 
and here the character is a little different but here's exactly what I want you to do on Sunday but God doesn't work that way God hasn't written the Bible that way God hides his commandments and and so uh, people who are not the true children of God cannot see them clearly and and so they end up trampling all over the commandment of God and they do whatever they want on on Sunday the Lord's Day they do as they please and and they feel justified oftentimes because the commandment is not readily available readily seen and on the surface and and again that that's strange and unusual why would God hide the commandment concerning the end of the church age but he did and what is the commandment once the church age comes to a close depart out of the midst of Jerusalem flee Judea and and run to the mountains there are some very serious and and tremendously important commands that God hid in his word that would be activated at a certain point in time and there are commands that have to do with life and death because if you cannot see God's commandment if people could not hear properly God's commandment to flee the church if God's commandment were hidden from them they would not leave they would not leave they they would listen to their pastor they would uh, they would search the Bible they would see um, no no pressing need to leave the church but God opens the ears he reveals his commandments to his people and he does not hide them from that from from the elect and so they see the commandment here God is saying depart out of the midst in the gospel of Luke flee to the mountain and so God's people now realize God is speaking to me and commanding me to do something it's not a matter of uh, an option or a choice or or what I think about it this is God's command just as um, any other commandment of the Ten Commandments or any other commandment in the Bible God is commanding me he has not hid his commandment from my eyes and therefore the child of God, given that new heart and spirit and an ongoing desire to do the will of God, or to say that another way, to obey the commandments of God, does obey. And like Abram came out of Ur of the Chaldees, the believers come out of the churches and congregations and go into the world. See, this is how God has written the Bible it, it's why God's people are doctrine oriented because when when we read the Bible we see the commandments of God and and God gives a desire for his people to do them and whatever it is we see that the Bible says a woman's not to teach why is it so many churches have women teaching and in positions of authority they don't see it and we see um, the truths that God has laid down in his word he opens our ears to his commandments to the deep and secret things as as it says here in Daniel 2 okay let, let's go on and look at the last part of the verse in Daniel 2 22 he knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him God knows 
uh, what is in the darkness. And, and of course, God knows everything. He knows what is in the light. He knows what's in the darkness. Um, it, it's actually all the same to him, as it says in Psalm 139. In Psalm 139, in verse 11, if I say surely the darkness shall cover me even the night shall be light about me yea the darkness hideth not from thee but the night shineth as the day the darkness and the light are both alike to thee god knows what is in the darkness he he knows what we do not know maybe that's a better way of putting it we are in the dark. Mankind, in his spiritually dead condition, is in the dark about a great many things. About everything spiritually. He, he's dead in his soul. It, he's dead in spirit. He's dead to spiritual things. He is in darkness. Now, God knows everything that man does not. Everything man is ignorant of and lacking in knowledge, God has absolute perfect understanding and knowledge. And so when we go to God because we are in the dark about a matter, we're in the, in, in the dark, in, 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 uh, we, we lack understanding, concerning a scripture, concerning whatever, God is not in the dark with us in, in the sense that he does not share our lack of understanding. He knows and has perfect knowledge of all things. And, and, and so that's why when we approach the Lord and we, we read a verse in the Bible, and we just don't get it. We don't understand it at all. When we go to God, we know He does fully understand it. We, we know God knows everything about it. And, and so here, here's the wonderful thing about prayer and uh, the wonderful encouragement to Daniel and his friends when they did not know the king's dream, and, and without knowing the dream, they couldn't know the interpretation, they turned to God who did possess knowledge of the dream and the interpretation of it. And they knew that. Daniel and, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew God had the information that they desired. And, and so they, they besought him and, and prayed, earnestly praying. Well, let, let's ask the question, does God know when the end of the world will be? Does God know the timeline for this present period of time? We, we know that the, there's a biblical calendar of history that God has mapped out the, the timetable for the whole history of the world, that he's shown us the timetable for the Great Tribulation, and now we're in the days after the Tribulation, does God know how long a period of time this will be and when it will conclude? Well, if you listen to the churches and, and they read the verse in Mark 13, 32, of that day and hour knoweth no man, neither the Son. And they, they actually um, think that God lacks information. They're, they are not reading verses like Daniel 2, 22, that, that says he knows what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. They, they would put God, the Lord Jesus Christ, eternal God, in the dark along with men that he cannot uh, understand a truth a, a doctrine and and you know it, it's not 
a good thing in any kind of way to say, well, the, the Lord Jesus Christ is eternal God and possesses 99.9% .9 of all knowledge, except, of course, he lacks understanding in, in this one small area of the end of the world. Uh, no, that that is degrading. That is dishonoring. Uh, that is taking away from the glory and power and almighty nature of God. And remember Job, what the Lord moved Job to say concerning himself. In the book of Job, chapter 24, verse 1, Why, seeing times are not hidden from the Almighty, do they that know him not see his days? Times are not hidden. And if something's hidden, it's concealed, kept secret, and man is in the dark. But times are not hidden from the Almighty. No, he, he knows what's in the darkness. He knows what man does not know in every matter, in every point of doctrine. Oh, and, and of course, in every word and every letter and every jot and tittle of the Bible, God knows the meaning and, and the fullness of the meaning, the depths of the meaning of every word that is pure and holy. God knows it all. It's his word. And it, it comes from his infinite glorious mind. And what foolishness, what absurdity for a man to say that God doesn't know his own word. He doesn't know the depths of that which he has spoken. How uh, totally dishonoring it is to God for a man to say that he is in the dark, that, that he has um, kept secret from himself uh, things related to the Bible. And, and no, no, that's not in the realm of possibility because he knows what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. And of course the light is the light of the world, the Lord Jesus Christ, the, the life which is the light of men. Christ is the light that dwells with God. And, and Christ, again, since he is the light, how can he not know something? Because the Bible equates lack of knowledge with darkness. And, and if Christ lacked knowledge on one point, on one word of the Bible, that would be a little speck of darkness, that, and therefore he would not be the, the light that shines with the brilliance of the sun any longer. No, there, there would be a, a taint of darkness in him. And, and, and again, no, that's not true of Jesus. He is light and understanding. And he possesses all knowledge concerning all things that have ever been going back into the far reaches of eternity past and going forward into the never-ending uh, uh, wonderful future that awaits each child of God into eternity future and all in between and, and certainly everything that concerns this little present a uh, speck of time that that God is unfolding on the planet Earth, uh, you, you know, we, we just can't um, say how ridiculous it is that man in his darkened condition would dare to imply that Jesus is likewise in the dark uh, about something, anything. No, it, it's not possible. All right, let's go on to verse 23 in Daniel chapter 2. I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might and has made known unto me now what we desired of thee, for thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. 
Well, we see that the Lord's granting understanding of the dream and interpretation, and, and again, I don't think we mentioned it during this study, but it is through the, the interpretation, through the giving of the dream and the interpretation of it, that Daniel, his friends, and all the wise of Babylon will be delivered. Just as was the case in, in reality, in, in spiritual reality, during the time of the Great Tribulation, when spiritual Babylon overcame the world's churches, that God opened up the scriptures to reveal the interpretation of that heavenly language, the, the, the language of a, a hard speech whose words we did not understand concerning the many truths that the Lord had sealed up till the time of the end. And then God opened the scriptures to the understanding of his people regarding the doctrine of the end of the church age and the Lord revealed the commandment to come out of the church. It was a command of God to flee to the mountain, the mountain representing God himself and his word, the Bible, and, and get out, get out of the churches and congregations and, and deliver yourselves. Deliver yourselves because the Lord was using the command as a mechanism to separate the wheat and the tares, and the tares would would not see or hear the command, and therefore would remain and be bundled as tares for the burning. God was separating his people from those that were professors uh, to being his people. They were not truly saved, and anyone that remain within a church, the corporate body, at the end of the Great Tribulation, that was uh, the allotted time you had uh, from the time at any point that you heard this up until the end of the Great Tribulation and the beginning of Judgment Day, which occurred on May 21, 2011, to flee the church. And if you did not, you would be destroyed. The door to the world would shut, and and all the while God was saving a great multitude outside of the churches, you and your family would have would have been in a a famine, a spiritually desolate land where God was not saving anyone at all, and and so for the benefit and the welfare of each one of his people the lord issued the command god's people heard and god's people moved to obey as the spirit of god uh, moved within them to will and do of his good pleasure and this is a cause for thanksgiving i thank thee and praise thee o thou god of my fathers who has given wisdom and might and has made known unto me now what we desired of thee for thou has now made known unto us the king's matter when god opens up a truth of any kind when when the lord reveals understanding of whatever verse in the bible the appropriate response for the children of god is thanksgiving i thank thee and praise thee and and how much the more when god opens up scripture that that saves us from burning when when god uh, opens up information that delivers us as uh, it, what historically was the case with daniel and his friends the information that God revealed literally saved their lives because they were about to perish with all the rest of the wise of Babylon and, and be destroyed. But God, through revelation, 
the Lord through making known to them the dream and the, the understanding of the dream, the interpretation, save their lives. And it's the same thing when God made known to his people, you must get out of the church. You must leave whatever church it is and never go back. Do not look back like Lot's wife. And if, if you're on the housetop, do not go back into the house uh, to, to get your vessel. Uh, if you're in the field, you do not return back for any kind of clothing. You do not return to the church ever again because the church age is over. The Spirit of God is not present within. And, and so be thankful and praise the Lord that he has spared you and delivered you the horrible death that was uh, awaiting all those that God hid his commandment from. And, and so this is the appropriate reaction for the child of God. It's a reaction of praise and thanksgiving. Re remember what it says in Philippians chapter 4 in verse 6. Be careful for nothing, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. Prayer and supplication. That's what Daniel and his friends were doing. And they certainly had something, if anyone ever did, to, to be anxious about. That they, they were threatened with death. And yet they turned to God with prayer and supplication. And with thanksgiving, they made their requests known unto God. And, well, uh, we're, we're reading of the thanksgiving here after God has uh, made known to them uh, the things that they desired of him. But it, it's all involved here. And, and Daniel was of the character that he would have been thanking God more than likely even before. And, and and just thanking the Lord for the opportunity that they could come before him, that they could present their petition, that they had hope that God would help them. That, that, that's a, a wonderful thing all by itself, that they had a relationship with God, and God is mighty and all-powerful and all-knowing. And, and the fact that a child of God can turn to him and can make known whatever matter, whatever trouble, whatever difficulty, that we can beseech God for help and for assistance. And, and we know God has the power to help. That's a blessing all by itself, deserving of thanksgiving and praise. And, and, and so... Uh, when we come to God, as we should be doing at this time, and, and praying to him, O oh Lord, help us. O oh Lord, we lack understanding. We uh, are not quite sure what you're doing in all matters regarding these days after the tribulation. We, we would uh, um, ask of you, O oh God, that you might reveal to us your plan, that you might lay out before us and help us, no, not help us, but make us to understand, cause us to understand, grant us a sure interpretation of the things you're doing now, because we know, O oh Lord, that you know, we know that you possess the knowledge, and we're not asking you something that that you uh, have no uh, information about you know all these things but of course lord we ask humbly and and we recognize that you are god and and the secret things belong to you they're not ours and we don't deserve them and it, it's not as though that we've done anything to uh, to earn it and we, we cannot 
try and force it out of you. Oh, Lord, may we not approach you that way. But we come before you making request, asking you for uh, understanding, but according to your perfect will, if you do not give it today or tomorrow or next year or ever, so be it according to your perfect will. And, and, and so we can pray, though, like the people of God should be praying with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving and making our requests known unto God. Well, the, the word known here um, that's repeated a couple of times in verse 23 and has made known unto me now what we desired of thee, for thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter, is uh, 3046. And again, as with many words in the book of Daniel, it's of Aramaic origins and corresponds to a Hebrew word. It, it's strongly related to a Hebrew word, which is 3045. And uh, 3045 is the word, for instance, in Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 23, where it says, Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Notice how God says that. I will make known my words because his words are are of a deep speech. His words are unknowable. They're words we cannot understand. We need an interpreter. We need someone to reveal to us. And only God can do that. We follow the methodology God lays out, comparing Scripture with Scripture, and the Holy Ghost teaches the Holy Ghost is the interpreter. I will guide you into all truth. It's the Spirit of God that directs, that leads his people in understanding or in interpretation of the things of God. And uh, it says in Ecclesiastes 8, the same Hebrew word, 3045, related to our Aramaic word, is found in Ecclesiastes 8, verse 5. Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel, the word feel is the word know, shall know no evil thing. And a wise man's heart discerneth, that's the same word, know, uh, as feel. A wise man's heart knoweth both time and judgment. Because why will a wise man's heart know time and judgment? There's only one way, because God will reveal it. That, that's the only way that anyone can have understanding regarding anything in the word of God. God reveals it. As it says in Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians 1 and in verse 8, wherein he has abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. God made known unto us the mystery of his will. And the mystery, if we would take the time to search out that word, has to do with the hidden things of the Bible, the parabolic things. As a parable is just that which serves to hide truth. And, and all the Bible hides truth. Therefore, all the Bible is a parable. And God makes known the mystery of his will, the hidden things of the Bible, according to his good pleasure. It's his good pleasure to save whom he will save. And it's his good pleasure to reveal to them the mystery of his will. Well, okay, let's go back to Daniel and move on to verse 24. Daniel 2 and verse 24 
says, Therefore Daniel went in unto Arioch, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus unto him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will show unto the king the interpretation. Now the, the word interpretation, the word that's used here is 6591. And it's used 13 times in Daniel chapter 2. Isn't that interesting? The word interpretation in a chapter that has to do with God opening up information at the time of the end during the Great Tribulation period when his people will come out of the church and go into the world just as Daniel and, and the, the Jews in Babylon came out of Judea and went into Babylon. At that time, in a chapter like this, God delivers the word or writes the word interpretation 13 times. And of course, we know that the year 1988, when the Great Tribulation began, and that was the point when God opened up the scriptures, really to open up means to interpret it, when God opened up the scriptures, it was the 13,000th year of Earth's history. And I don't think that's a coincidence that the Lord uses the word interpretation 13 times in this chapter. It's, it's uh, in verse 25 and 26 here also. Then Arioch brought in Daniel before the king in haste and said thus unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah that will make known unto the king the interpretation. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, Art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen, and the interpretation thereof? And uh, interpretation, interpretation, 13 times. And, and it, it reminds us of when Ezra was preaching from the pulpit in Nehemiah, and there were 13 men that caused the people to understand the word that was preached. It, because it related to the time God would make known the mystery, the, the deep and hidden things that have been sealed up till the time of the end. But, but notice the sequence of events. Daniel and his friends beseech the Lord uh, for all it's worth because their life depends on it. God reveals to them. God makes known to them the dream and the interpretation. And then God personally himself goes to Ariak the guard, and then God is brought in before the king, and then God will tell the king he'll, he'll make the dream and interpretation known to him. Is that how it worked? No. No. It, it, that's not how God works. That's not the process that God has put into place here some 2,600 years ago. And it's not how the process God has had in place for the church age. And it, and it wasn't the process that God had in place for uh, the latter rain. And it's not the process that God has in place in this time in the days after the tribulation in the day of judgment. The process is always, is always, God reveals to his people, that he makes known to them. Then his people share with others. And, and so we see Daniel, not God, but Daniel, a man, go to Arioch. And then Daniel goes before the king. And and of course, to Arioch and to Dan and to the king of Babylon, they only see Daniel. They they don't see the process. They're not aware and probably have little concern that Daniel has just besought the Lord, besought the Lord, besought the Lord for help for for information he could not possibly have known on his own. 
and God revealed it. And now Daniel possesses the knowledge. And Daniel comes to others and and he tells them. He doesn't try and, and um, uh, make as if he's some wise one or great one. No, look what he says in verse 28. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Daniel tells them, it's not because of me. Just like Joseph, remember? When, when Joseph was called out of prison and brought before Pharaoh to interpret Pharaoh's dream, it says in Genesis chapter 41 in uh, verse 15, And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it, and I have heard say of thee, that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. The, the people of God, the, these true children like Daniel and Joseph, they don't try to take God's glory in any way. Yet, this is the process. This is the way that God is determined to work things out. He gives, he grants understanding regarding, in their cases, uh, dreams and, and interpretations of dreams. And then they are the ones that are found standing before pharaohs and kings of Babylon. And they declare the interpretation in the dream. And, and all of a sudden, the, the king or pharaoh is mightily impressed with the man standing before him. And, and they shower them with riches and fame in some cases for providing interpretation. And yet they told them the truth. They told them the truth. God makes known. God is the revealer of secrets, the deep and hidden things. God is the one who has showed me and therefore now I can show you. And, and you see, that's how God works. Christ breaks the bread and then gives the bread to the disciples. And the disciples are given to the multitude. And the multitude, each group of 50, has a disciple ministering to them the miraculous loaves of bread. Jesus is off uh, away from them, distant from them in, in some ways, they see only the disciple. Thanks for joining us for eBible Fellowship Sunday Bible Study. For more information or to hear additional Bible studies, be sure to visit our website at www.ebiblefellowship.com.